Hello, my name's Simon Rule. I'm a professor of haematology at the Peninsula Medical School in Plymouth, and I'm a consultant haematologist in Dereford Hospital, Plymouth. Low-grade lymphoma means indolent, and indolent is another term for slow-growing. Uh, and these are forms of lymphoma that often have few in the way of symptoms, actually. They will present with lumps and bumps, and uh, the biopsy will show it's a form of lymphoma. Sometimes they're diagnosed by chance, in fact. Some other procedures done, for example, you've had a gallbladder taken out and there's some lymph glands and a, a biopsy will show it's low-grade lymphoma. So what does that mean? So the first thing to emphasize is lymphomas are forms of cancer. Cancer meaning cells growing in a place where they shouldn't be. Um, but because they're cancers of the lymph gland, it's very important to uh, make the point that this isn't solid cancers, things like lung cancer, bowel cancer, breast cancer, which have spread to lymph glands. That's a different scenario altogether. So these are diseases that affect lymph glands, they are almost always in lots of places at diagnosis. Like with all the other lymphomas, the first thing we need to do is see exactly where that is. So that involves a CT scan and a bone marrow and some blood tests. And as I said, invariably this is in a number of places. And that doesn't matter. Now that does matter with breast cancer, bowel cancer, lung cancer, the solid cancers, where if it has spread beyond the initial site, then that's generally a more difficult clinical situation. With these diseases, it's what you'd expect, and it doesn't necessarily mean any difference from a treatment point of view. My first symptoms were a lump in the groin the size of an egg, and I contacted my GP, and very luckily, I wasn't the first lymphoma patient she'd ever seen, and so she told me straight away, I think you have lymphoma but we'll follow the normal route. To watch and wait for two weeks. If the lump goes, you've got an infection. If it doesn't go, you've probably got lymphoma. In the two weeks, a second lump came up on my neck. So it was lymphoma, and the whole thing with the hospital started at that stage. And it started off with fine needle aspirations in the two lumps, and then um, a, a CT scan, an MRI scan, and that's when the uh, diagnosis of B-cell lymphoma came up. Previously to that, it was just lymphoma. Again, as with most lymphomas, this is a disease of older people. They're common as we get older. Um, and just a few important points about these diseases. That there's nothing that we know of that brings them on. They're not due to smoking, drinking, overhead power lines, microwave ovens, mobile phones, these are the things people normally ask me. Uh, environmental factors, so there's nothing that we know of that's leading to these conditions. First feeling was, what is lymphoma? I had no idea, I'd never heard of it before I got it as a diagnosis. So I went uh, away and checked it on the internet, of course, as one does and was totally surprised and how did I get that, what did I do, which is the normal reaction. I mean, I know the truth now is that you don't ever know how you got it, it's just something that happened to you. And um, a mixture of, oh, well, it's not so bad, oh, well, it's terrible, and uh, up and down, depression, and then ignoring, which was basically the best thing to do, really, because there was a lot of waiting around. Now, the strange thing about this group of conditions, and again, this seems completely counterintuitive in the world of cancer, is that early diagnosis, early treatment makes absolutely no difference to outcome. Now, that is not the case with just about every other cancer you think about. But uh, if this disease is diagnosed and it's in a number of places and the patient is well, their lumps aren't terribly big, it's not causing any problems, and the bone marrow is fine, then you leave it alone. Now again, watching and waiting, that's what we call this. Um, active surveillance is probably a better term. Um, um, doesn't compromise how long you live. And again, that seems completely wrong. You'd imagine, diagnose something early, treat it early, get rid of it, make me live longer. It's not the case. If I sat and thought about it, I became thoroughly unpleasant to live with because I was totally introverted and upset that I had got this illness and I didn't know anything about it. 
So I tried to be very positive and forget about it and just live life as normal because at that stage I had these lumps, you know, so what, everybody has lumps. <laughs> I didn't feel ill, just fed up that I'd got something that I couldn't control. So you are watched in that scenario and you'll be followed up in clinic probably increasingly infrequently if you're well. Uh, people don't tend to want to do recurrent scans because we don't want to expose you to lots of x-rays, but your scans will be done if there's a change in your clinical situation, particularly if you become unwell. And you won't become unwell overnight, it's a, it's a gradual process. So if, if the doctor has concerns that your disease is starting to cause you problems, then you'll have a scan and then treatment would be discussed at that point. Now there are lots of treatments for these conditions, that's the other thing. Um, by and large, the treatment of choice for an indolent or low-grade lymphoma that needs treatment is form of chemotherapy in combination with the monoclonal antibody rituximab. We know that adding rituximab to chemotherapy improves the outcome significantly, so that's the standard of care. There are a number of different chemotherapies and there's no absolute uh, one type that's appropriate for everybody. So you tend to use the chemotherapy that's appropriate for the patient, by which I mean the older you are, the more uh, other medical problems you have, uh, the less inclined we would be to give you more intensive type therapies. They decided because I also had a lymphoma mass on my sacrum that watching weight didn't work anymore, so I had to start treatment. The big mistake was to read what other people said about chemotherapy. So I expected it to be awful, and the first course wasn't so bad. I do have to say each lot of chemotherapy was more difficult to handle. I was really surprised at how quickly my hair dropped out. I hadn't expected that at all. but. The hairdresser was great and said, either you can have hair dropping out every day for the next two weeks or I can shave it off for you. So she shaved it off for me. You would expect to get a response. Most patients treated with this condition get a response and that's assessed by a scan, uh, usually in the middle of treatment. Most people are going to get six lots of treatment three or four weeks apart. We'll do a scan, then you get another scan at the end of six lots of treatment and then at that point, uh, rituximab is often given in what's called a maintenance setting. So we give rituximab for uh, two years in total. And we know doing that uh, reduces the chance of the disease coming back in the short term. However, these conditions are generally incurable and they will come back at some point in the future. But it's usually many years away. I was absolutely fine. And then suddenly I got real bad pains in my hip and I was having trouble in walking. I had another scan to check up on that and they decided that I've got a second mass developing. So it would be a good idea if I had some further treatment. So the thing with indolent lymphomas is that you can have more than one relapse and uh, that, that's often the case in fact, particularly with younger patients. So having say watched for a while and then treated there'll be a period of remission, usually when quality of life goes completely back to normal, uh, then it'll relapse, we'll treat again, and then generally you're going to see a, a pattern of ongoing relapse. And, and generally speaking, your first treatment gives you the longest remission, and then subsequent treatments give shorter and shorter remissions. And how you manage those multiple relapses, again, depends entirely on fitness of the patient, what you're trying to achieve, where the relapse is, uh, and, and what drugs you've, you've got available. So the other thing is, unlike some situations, some even some types of aggressive lymphoma, um, multiple relapses can be effectively treated. So um, you, can, you can retreat this disease on, on numerous occasions. The other thing I would say is write questions down before you meet your consultant. Um, nobody minds being asked questions. No, no question's a stupid question. Uh, and the minute you walk into a consulting room, if you haven't written it down, you will have forgotten 
we are very intimidating apparently I find that hard to believe but we are so patients tend to forget and get a bit flustered when we're telling you things and you, you, you don't always take it take it on board so bring somebody with you if you want bring something to you know record the conversation I don't mind that uh, why would I so just so that you can remember what's been said that's life if it relapses it relapses if it doesn't it doesn't so just live your life and forget about worrying about it and I can honestly say at that stage I get I gave up the worry of wait and worry and did watch and wait and um, that's what I've done since I've had six monthly che checks since then and um, been absolutely fine. Mm -hmm.